Conversations from the Cave is a raw self-help podcast dedicated to discussing men's issues. From pornography to parenting, from religion to real life, from learning to loving, we discuss the real issues that affect real men every day. Join us each week for powerful, revealing conversations from the cave. Now your host, Kirk Kennedy. Welcome to Conversations from the Cave. I am your host, Kirk Kennedy, and I'm so excited to have each and every one of you along today. We're going to do a live show, which is a a little different than what we typically do. Uh, We will be having a live show on the 22nd with all the guys back in the cave, and we'd like to invite you to be part of that experience as well. Uh, Just join us on our social media page at Facebook. On Facebook, just simply search Conversations from the Cave, land on our Facebook page, and then make a suggestion as to where maybe you'd like to have our next conversation from the cave meet and greet which is an opportunity for us to meet the wonderful guys who tune in each and every week to our podcast we'd also like to thank the guys who join us each and every week uh, nola 73 also mustang and ba today since we're doing a live show uh, it will be me carrying it solo But I want to invite each and every one of you to visit us also on our social media pages as we try to continue sharing the show with uh, those who are interested in studying men's issues. Today's issue is calling in the good things, calling in the positive things. A lot of times we go through life not realizing all of the things that we desire in life or having the realization of those things coming to pass. We see many uh, things that are sometimes depressing Uh, on social media for the last few weeks. I've noticed a lot of people who are filled, so filled with despair that they have, uh, some of them have contemplated suicide and some have even just wanted to um, not wake up, not want to spend another day on this planet. And a life that is full of despair is a life that is one that is calling out for something greater. We'll talk a little bit more about what that something greater is, but it is impactful to, um, to start to ask the question, are we living? our best life? Are we living our fullest uh, potential? Are we making a difference in the way that we live, through the way that we live, in the lives of those whom we come in contact with? So today we're going to talk about living on purpose and how to have the most positive experiences uh, that will give us the most fruitful types of lives. I want to talk and use the life of um, someone who's near and dear to me. Uh, I had a grandmother who lived to be over a hundred years old. Um, She was a woman who was a feisty, um, perhaps all of four foot 11, maybe five feet in heels woman, but she was one who commanded a great deal of respect. But what was interesting is it was not her physical stature that commanded the respect. It was not necessarily that she had beautiful physical appearance, which commanded the respect and admiration of many who knew her. But what was most compelling about her was the way in which she could relate to people. She never met a person that she didn't uh, reach out to and uh, find some common ground with. She was a, an educator for many years and impacted the lives of her students in, in ways that only eternity will tell. But what's interesting about her life was that she had several central tenets to her life, which I think are worth sharing. One is that she was a consistent believer in the power of prayer. 
She felt that prayer would impact one's life in such a way that things that were um, difficult to deal with or things that were basically impossible to deal with could be dealt with through the power of prayer. And the belief was that if you could pray about something and believe it without questioning the outcome, that somehow or another, circumstances would work out in ways that we couldn't imagine to have positive outcomes to the um, particular issue. So paired with that concept was the notion of choosing not only to pray about something, but to also choose not to worry about something. So the process of actually praying about it gives it um, gives it less hold on the mind and releases the mind from anxiety. Anxiety is this notion of continuing to fret over something that cannot be changed or to presume that nothing can be done, and it is far more um, important to simply fret about it. I'd like to cite a, another case of um, why a positive mental outlook and why calling in the good is a better way of living. Uh, in the course of uh, my work from day to day, I come across uh, patients who have uh, extremely difficult um, choices to make sometimes. They've been to many uh, care practitioners and many physicians, and those physicians have not necessarily given them the best news. But it's not those individuals who, I mean, the number of individuals who get bad news, uh, there's a lot of us who do from time to time. But how we choose to deal with a particular situation and how we call in the good from that situation is something that I think requires more mental discipline. So I'll share a story, a short story. Um, had the experience of a patient who came in with a seeing eye dog, and our area of care is vision. And in the course of that journey, uh, when that patient came in with the seeing eye dog, we found that the patient's vision could be restored. She'd lived with the seeing eye dog for nearly 10 years, and the seeing eye dog had become part of not only her life, but was interwoven into the very fabric of her day. In addition, she suffered with extreme light sensitivity, and this extreme light sensitivity made it virtually impossible for her to leave her home on a regular basis, so the sensitivity to light uh, forced her to keep her windows closed and keep her draw, uh, blinds drawn. And she lived her life mostly like a vampire in the darkness. And what was so telling about this was um, her daughter and mother were also patients at her office. And what was interesting is that they went to her and said, hey, we've had good outcomes. Could it be that maybe you should go where we went? So each of them, very positive ladies, felt that there was hope. So they recommended that this uh, patient come to our office and see if there was a possibility of having treatment. The beauty was that she was able to have treatment and was likely going to have a good outcome. So this information was shared with her only to find out that she had one question. What will happen to my seeing eye dog and my disability benefits? I want that to sink in for a moment, just to sink in. What must life be like if the choice that you're making to have the freedom of your sight versus the loss of your friend or the loss of the life you've come to know? What must life be like to make a choice where you have to question, is it worth it to me? to see better, to have the freedom of going outside, watching my grandchildren grow up, making new friends, to 
journey outside the confines of these four walls, is it, is it really worth it to me? Or is it better to simply have my life as it is within these four walls with this dog and with the blinds drawn? We shared and our staff took time to share with her that it would be a journey, but it was possible that we really could see the outcome being a good one and that she could, in fact, have the freedom of leaving that life in the darkness behind and that she could walk in the light of the day without pain and that she could go to the park, that she could experience things, that she could see the stars for the first time, maybe even the moon and and to have a life that was full. But in her mind, the thought that she had was the loss of her dog because the state provided the dog as a result of her disability, her visual impairment. She couldn't see herself necessarily picking another dog or having any other choice. Do we sometimes look at life like this lady, where what we have, whether it's good or bad, is what we know, and the fear of having something different, or the fear of having something new, or the fear of embarking upon a journey that we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, pardon the, uh, the pun, but do we oftentimes take this approach and miss out on the very, very best of life because we're choosing to remain in the darkness, choosing to live within the confines of what we know, choosing to be able to control just the environment that our hands can touch. I think the saddest part of that story is how that story ended, and that story ended very profoundly. That lady was dead within six months of this uh, examination, and she died from cardiac arrest. Her heart stopped. She was in good health otherwise. But I think that the difficulty of realizing that she'd made a choice now to remain in the darkness was one that probably wore much more heavily upon her than even I could imagine. I want to contrast that gloom and doom story with one that is extremely encouraging and extremely positive and showing how we call in the good oftentimes allows us to rise above circumstances which may otherwise hold us back. So that's for, that first story was about a woman whose desire to remain in the darkness was greater than her desire to see the light. Another patient came in a younger patient, and her experience was roughly the same. Pain, oftentimes not being able to see um, a corneal transplant and it rejected so the eye was cloudy. Blindness was a very real world for her to live in, yet and still she saw this is yet another experience in life just an experience, not something to stop her, but just an experience, neither good nor bad news, neither uh, positive or negative, just news. And by taking that moment, by taking that time to simply look at it from the perspective of it is news, she looked within herself and decided to say, well, if this is the journey, let's go through that journey. And each day, through each of the treatments, she continued to press forward, never losing grades. Her grades maintained a straight A average. She continued to press forward until she received not just a high school diploma, not just a college degree, not just a master's, but continued her education to and through her doctorate. And it was only at one point in her life when a doctor said to her, "This we've done all that we can do, hopefully research will uh, provide other opportunities, that she began to question whether or not this was going to uh, be a very difficult road that she was not prepared to continue on. But she remained positive, and she continued to pray. She continued to believe. 